you ever been stuck writing a story simply staring at a blank page on your screen? It's been hours since you've started and it feels like your brain simply doesn't work. Not putting out a single useful thought and thus making no progress, keeping the page empty and most of all leaving you unsatisfied. Well, let me tell you that you're not the only one who experiences this and it definitely doesn't make you a bad writer. In fact, thousands of people, even lifelong writers, deal with this issue every day. Which begs the simple question, how do we get better at writing stories, and in particular those for games? Additionally, how do we use story to further immerse the player into our game world? In today's video, we'll be answering these questions by discussing how immersion works in stories, and the 5 steps that I use to write an overarching story for my games. Hope you learned something. So before we get into these 5 steps, let's first consider what even makes a story immersive to begin with. And it all starts when the player looks at the store page of a game. Here they may get to look at the trailer, view some gameplay footage, or read the summary of the game. So depending on whether or not they like it, this is where they decide to buy the game. And also where immersion kicks off if they decide to do so. Which I know sounds a bit odd, but hang in there. So there's something you should know about stories, and that is that most commonly people read, watch, or play them because they want to transport their minds in a reality that's other than their own. Then, by looking at the store page and deciding to buy the game, the player essentially accepts this reality, at least for the time being, which hopefully is the duration of the game. This is also called the suspension of disbelief, and I'll explain it with the following example. When you go to the cinema to watch a new DC movie about Superman or Aquaman, you don't actually think that Superman can fly or that Aquaman can control the sea, but you're simply accepting that to be true at least for the duration of the movie. So even though your logical brain knows something isn't true, you're suspending that belief. With that said, when the player decided to play the game, they had already accepted the reality of that world and the story within it, and thus opening themselves up to immerse themselves in it. And from this point onward, there are only really two things that can technically happen. Either the story gets better and the player gets more immersed, or it gets ruined having them lose touch with it. Which sounds simple, but it's the truth. And I'll explain them both separately. Starting with adding details. So you must have heard of the phrase, the devil's in the details, which basically means that however simple some details may seem, they might actually be quite complicated complicated in the sense that different players will interpret them in different ways. And this is mostly true for the smaller kind of details. Think about a blue bird that flies in a flock of white ones, or a random skull laying underneath a post sign. And these are the kind of details that get some people to really think. And however details like this might not directly matter to the story of the game, including them will cause people to think about them and kind of shape their own stories around it, which, as it turns out, actually plays a big role in imaginative emergency. Of course, you wouldn't want to be using these kind of details or events too often as it might break the balance within the story. Which brings us to the other part and that is to properly guide the player, or better known as not breaking the pacing. So imagine pacing like walking on a beach. With each event or thing happening inside of the story, player takes one step forward in the sand, theoretically of course. These steps represent pacing, and pacing can change in two ways, either gradually, like a relative that slowly gets sick, or abruptly, like a relative that suddenly dies, and both of these can break the pacing. When the pacing goes faster, the player takes more but shorter steps in the sand, and when it goes slower, less but longer steps. But what if the player trips over their own feet, or their legs simply aren't long enough to make the next step? Well, this is what happens when the pacing is off, and it can quickly result in the player putting down the game. This is obviously not what you want, so I advise you to only use abrupt changes if it's for emotional reasons, because they're an easy way to break pacing if they're used incorrectly. Additionally, you may want to try to build up and disassemble the story gradually to ensure that as many players as possible can stay on track with it. Hey, I hope you're learning something, but I just wanted to tell you about the Discord server that you can join with the top link down below, where you can meet like-minded people and continue the conversation about immersion or talk about games and game dev related things. Click the link and join now. Alright, so what exactly are the 5 steps? Well, 
you can see them laid out on the screen right now. Starting with the world, then setting, then plot, then level, and finally the content of each level. So I've decided to split up these different areas in steps, going from step 1 to step 5, but they may also be viewed as levels, having the world as the top level and content as the bottom one. Now, before we dive into the details, let me clarify that I'm going to be asking you a lot of different questions, but I'm hoping to spark your imagination and get you to really think about each one of these steps. So let's dive into each one of them. Step 1. World. During this step, you'll shape your world, or as some refer to it, universe. This will serve as the overarching world that the story takes place in. That means that this is the time to define all of the highest elements that are important, relevant, or interesting to the story. Think about in what time period it plays. The past? Now? The future? What countries or planets are there? What species inhabit these planets? Regular humans? Aliens? Maybe lizards? Are there any ongoing wars between these species? Did any catastrophic events happen in the past 10 or 100 years? Maybe a meteor hit the planet or there was a massive virus outbreak. What about politics? Does one person rule the entire world or is it a group of people? Again, these are all of the highest level elements of a story that you can best define as soon as possible when writing for your game. And with the highest level, I mean the highest level that is of importance to your game. In Dying Light, it would be that there is a zombie apocalypse and that 99% of the war population died. Or in Resident Evil, it would simply be the regular world, except there is a big company called the Umbrella Corporation that performs some really unethical experiments, leading to, amongst others, zombies. Once you've identified the highest level elements that are of importance to your game, you can move on to step 2, setting. The setting is kind of like the localized area that the entire game will take place in. During this step, you'll still determine some higher level details about the story, but this time a little bit more detailed and specifically focused at parts that are particularly important to the game. Think back to the different species. What do they eat? Do they live inside of houses, trees, caves? What do they enjoy doing the most? Maybe they are born as fishers or skydivers. Are they typically violent or peaceful? You could even go as deep to determine as to whether or not they eat their food using cutlery or with their hands, which all depends on the kind of details that matter for your game. In an open world game for instance, you could benefit from knowing how each species eat, while on the other hand, in a Super Mario Bros game, you wouldn't really need to know what Koopa Troopa eats or what Goomba likes to do in their free time, although I'm quite interested in that actually. <laughs> Additionally, think about who is in charge. What are the weather conditions? How do the species divide themselves? Like are there any specific groups within them? What plant or animal life is there around? There are a dozen of questions that you may ask yourself here, and I suggest just letting your mind wander for a bit while writing down everything you can think of so you can organize it later. Now, if you've written down some interesting stuff about the setting, it's time for step 3, plot. During this step, you'll actively try to create your plot, and it's probably the most difficult step. Now you will decide how you will write your story, which dynamic elements you'll include in it, and what change will happen throughout the story, which might be overwhelming, but I'll guide you through it. So first, the how in writing a story. And this depends on the following two things, point of view or POV and tone. Point of view is from what perspective the story is told. And you're probably thinking, well, from the player's perspective, which yes is true, but there are still some nuances with this. Think about a character that actually speaks their thoughts and emotions, such as in Alan Wake, versus a blank character that doesn't speak at all, such as in Soma. Additionally, the story may also be told from a narrator that narrates your actions, such as in the Stanley Parable. Then the tone or theme of a story determines how it is told. Think about a grim and dark theme as opposed to a cute and rainbow one. As an example, a level where something is chasing you might include a killer with a blunt weapon in a dark theme or a duck with a butter knife in a cute one. Defining the perspective and tone will thus determine how you'll write some parts of the story then the witch in writing a story. And this includes all of the dynamic elements inside of your world. Think about the main character, side character, creatures. Politics could change as well. Maybe the weather. Try to define the most important dynamics in your story, typically beginning with the characters. Now, there's a common mistake that a lot of people tend to make when they're creating a character. And that is that you're trying to make it way more complicated than it has to be. 
While what's truly interesting about a character are their specific character traits. And with that, I don't mean 10 strength or 20 agility, but more simpler traits. Think about a strong muscular ogre that is afraid of puppies, or a small girl that bosses around a group of adult people. These are the kind of characters that are interesting and the player will most likely memorize. Not because they're so overly complex, but because of a single few interesting traits. By then making these traits shine through with the story, you're making your character shine as well. And funny enough, this does not just apply to characters. Think about some interesting weather conditions, like having it rain cats or dogs, or having thunder all the time, or an entire cave filled with just bunnies. So remember, simple characteristics that shine through are better than complex ones that don't. Identifying all of the dynamic elements for your story simplifies the process later on. Finally, the change that will happen throughout the story. And this is determined by the general story that you want for your game together with all of the dynamic elements. And I'll explain it with an example. Let's say you're making a game about a lone lumberjack that travels to the forest to find the love of their life. Quite simple, but that could literally be it for your main story. Now, I want you to take that story and imagine a big horizontal line. Currently, the only thing on that line is travel through the forest, which is a bit bland. Don't you think? So what you'll do now is you're going to fill in the gaps with the dynamic elements that we defined before. Is there often thunder in the forest? Put it in there. Is there a group of thugs that may stop him? Put it in there. A feral wolf that he has to fight? Put it in there. All of these dynamic elements will, well, make the game more dynamic. And with that, make the travel from point A to point B throughout the story that much more interesting. But be aware, don't forget about the pacing. After a big boss fight, for instance, let the player rest for a bit. Or not, if you're a Dark Souls fanatic, that is. If you've got an idea for a plot, the next thing is step 4, level or area. During this step, you'll define a level or area. Each game consists out of multiple different levels, or areas if we're talking about an open world game. And for each of these, we'll have to consider the following three things. Placement, purpose, and mood. And this step will take less time than a previous one, but you'll of course have to do this for each level. So it's important to understand the placing of your level. Is it the first level of your game? Does it take place after another specific level, maybe a boss fight, or before a specific level? You need to get a sense of where in the game this level takes place. What story elements has the player been exposed to at this point? What skills do they possess? Or which mechanics have they mastered? These are all dependent on at which place in the game this level happens. If you know the player will have mastered the rocket launcher mechanic in the previous few levels, you might consider topping it off with a specific boss fight in order to test their skills. This helps put the level in perspective with the greater whole of the game. Then the purpose of the level. What's the goal of the level, or the reason you want to include it? Will the player face a specific enemy, learn something new, save an important character? There has to be a reason for you to make the level, otherwise you might as well not include it at all. If your character travels home by bus, and you include an entire level where the player is just sitting around waiting to arrive home, there isn't really a reason for you to make this and include this in the game. Besides that, the player will also want to know why they're doing what they're doing. For instance, if they're just walking through a big cave, it might not seem as important or intense as it would be if they're running away from an enemy in order to survive. And finally, the mood of the level. What are the emotions that you want to convey throughout your level? Will there be sadness or joy? Anger or disbelief? Wonder or eeriness? With that, it'll determine some artistic elements such as lighting, music, composition even, of your level. In a level with joy, the sun would shine, where one with sadness would include the moon instead. In a level of anger, you might decide to add some more enemies or choose a reddish theme. If you want to induce wonder in the player, you might use some colorful objects and soft calming lighting. A game that does this incredibly well and quite obviously is Arise A Simple Story. In this game, basically every level has a completely different mood, adapting to the emotional journey of this story. Now, once you have an idea for your level, it's time to move on to step 5, content. During this step, you'll be adding in the content of the level. These are the elements that will carry the player from the beginning to the end of the level and allow them to experience what you want them to experience. Within this step, it's not just about the content itself, but also about the begin and end state of the level, which we've kind of already defined. The begin state of the level fully depends on the placement of it within the game. For the begin state, it's important to define the mechanics, skills, story knowledge, killed bosses, etc. And you should already know this by now, because you've already defined the placement of the level within the game. 
So think to yourself, what does the player possess at this point of the game? Now, the end state of your level is driven by its purpose. What is the player supposed to do and what will be the end result of that? If the purpose of a level is to escape a giant labyrinth, then the end state of the level will be that the player successfully escaped it. If you look at both the begin and end state of the game, you can once again draw a line in between these. This line represents the journey the player has to make in order to get from the begin state to the desired end state. And this is where the content of the level comes into place, which could come in many different ways. Maybe there's a map of the labyrinth at the entrance, or maybe the player can find this somewhere within it. Is there a monster trying to find the player while they escape? Or maybe other explorers that can help them? Are there traps in the labyrinth? Notes scattered around with little bits of story in them? Maybe there's a large statue that's in the center of the map so the player can kind of map where they are. Again, just sparking your interest. And as you might have noticed, a lot of these story elements are directly tied together with in-game mechanics. A monster would need AI pathfinding, or traps would require the player to think about their every move. Once you have identified which content would fit in between the begin and end state, you've successfully created one whole level inside of your story. So, congratulations on that. Alright, so I'll put all of the steps on the screen one more time so you can get a final look at them. And I want you to understand the following thing about it. And that is that within this video, I shared a lot of theory with you, asking a lot of questions to you and giving you examples of how you would use each of the steps for yourself. However, it's unrealistic to assume that you're just going to be using all of the steps inside of this model from now on for all of your stories, which is why I urge you to think about the things we've talked about, find the parts that you found interesting or informational and try to adapt these to your own writing. Maybe it helps you to define the world or universe before getting into the rest of the story, while for someone else it might be to start with a character first. And that is completely fine, as long as you find something that works for you. Alright, so today we've taken a look at imaginative immersion in games. After a relatively short explanation on how to achieve immersion in your stories, we dove deep into the five steps of writing a story for your game. For each step, We've gone over what it means and how you can use it in order to identify different parts of the story that are of importance to your game. I've asked you many, many different questions and I really hope that I didn't overwhelm you, but I've rather sparked some new ideas. This video is actually part of a series of videos about immersion in games, this one being the third one, diving into imaginative immersion. If you're interested, you can watch the previous two videos as well, and soon I'll be creating one last video about challenge-based immersion. With that said, I would like to invite you over to join our Discord server using the link down below, where we can continue the conversation about story telling in games or talk about games and game dev related things with like-minded people. Click the link and join now. That's it for this video. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it and also learned something from it. If you did, like the video and let me know in the comments down below what exactly you liked about this video or what you might have learned. And also tell me if you would like to see a specific kind of video in the future. Hope to see you back in another video. Bye bye.